Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1981, and today, we're going to talk about Donkey Kong. The story of Donkey Kong takes us to Nintendo. We have mentioned Nintendo in several videos, and then talked about the history of Nintendo to this point in its own video. Nintendo had been successful in the video game industry in Japan to this point, but that success had yet to translate to the American market. Their most recent attempt to break into the American market was Radar Scope, which we talked about in 1980. It had been unsuccessful, with around 2,000 unsold arcade cabinets sitting in Nintendo's warehouse. Nintendo's president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, thought of converting these arcade cabinets into a different game he turned to a young designer named Shigeru Miyamoto. Shigeru Miyamoto had graduated from college with a degree in industrial design. Initially wanting to become a professional manga artist, his father instead got him an interview at Nintendo. Miyamoto showed some of his toy creations to Yamauchi, and Miyamoto was hired in 1977, becoming Nintendo's first artist. Miyamoto's work would start to be released in 1979. Miyamoto had designed the case for the color TV game Block Kazushi, as well as the artwork for the arcade game Sheriff. We talked about the color TV game Block Kazushi in our video game's honorable mentions video of 1979. We have not talked about Sheriff, which is Nintendo's first coin-operated arcade game. Sheriff is a western-themed shooter designed by Nintendo R&D 1's Genyo Takeda in 1979. In it, the player must fight a gang of bandits and rescue the damsel in distress. The game would be successful enough in Japan to be released in Europe and North America, but was otherwise unremarkable. Miyamoto then helped Nintendo R&D 2 with Radar Scope although what Miyamoto actually worked on is unclear. Some say his involvement was just for the artwork, while others say he helped with the graphics of the game as well. The game, as we have mentioned, was a big failure for Nintendo when it was released in America. Miyamoto was then tasked with converting the unsold radar scope cabinets into a new game, with Gunpei Yokoi as Miyamoto's supervisor. We have mentioned Gunpei Yokoi previously in our History of Nintendo video. The budget for the game was set at $100,000, over $289,000 in 2021. Miyamoto looked for inspiration from several different sources, finally deciding on a love triangle. Originally, the characters were meant to be similar to Popeye, Olive Oil, and Bluto. However, Nintendo could not obtain the rights to the cartoon, so the male characters changed to a carpenter and a gorilla. Miyamoto has claimed that the fairy tale Beauty and the Beast had an influence, as well as the 1933 film King Kong, which we talked about in our last video. It is thought that this is the first time that the story of a video game was thought of first, and then the video game was programmed around the story, instead of the video game's mechanics coming first and story later. Miyamoto knew he lacked programming skills, so he would reach out to other employees at Nintendo for help with the mechanics of the game. Miyamoto originally wanted all three characters to have different sizes, move differently, and react differently, but this proved to be too difficult. Gunpei Yokoi thought of having seesaws catapult the character across the screen, but this also proved too difficult to program. The idea then moved to sloped platforms and ladders, with rolling barrels as obstacles. Miyamoto also wanted to have multiple stages. The programming team thought that this was essentially making the same game several times, but were able to program the multiple stages. Technically, the game worked on a restructured radar scope circuit board. The game would still have remnants from radar scope, including the character set, the scoreboard, the display at the top of the screen, and the font. However, 
Yukio Kaneoka would create an original soundtrack for the game. When it came to naming the game, Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to name it after the gorilla, seeing that as the strongest character. Hiroshi Yamauchi wanted an English title for the name, wanting the game to target the North American market. Many of Nintendo's games had English titles already, so this was not uncommon. The exact origin of the name has become the subject of rumors. The most popular is that Miyamoto used a Japanese to English dictionary and looked up something that would mean silly and stupid and came up with Donkey. However it was chosen, the name Donkey Kong was decided upon, meaning to convey the idea of a stupid ape. Yamauchi thought that the game would sell well, so he reached out to the head of Nintendo's operations in America, Minoru Arakawa. Nintendo's American distributors, Ron Judy and Al Stone, brought a lawyer to Arakawa for the purpose of getting a trademark on the game. That lawyer was Howard Lincoln. The game was sent to Nintendo of America for testing. At first, the sales manager didn't like the game, seeing it as too different from the standard maze and shooter games of the time. The title was also seen as strange, but Minoru Arakawa insisted the game would be popular, so the American staff began translating. The hero, unnamed in Japan, became Jumpman, meant to mirror the popular names of the time, such as Pac-Man and the Sony Walkman. The woman would simply be known as Lady. The game was tested at two bars in Seattle. It proved to be successful there and the bars requested more machines. Work then began on converting all the radar scope machines still in the warehouse. Donkey Kong is a climbing game. The player will play Jumpman, who must rescue Lady from Donkey Kong by avoiding obstacles and climbing to the top of each stage on platforms and ladders. Along the way, the player can collect a hammer power-up, which allows Jumpman to destroy anything in his path. The player can also collect hats, parasols, and purses, which presumably belong to Lady. Jumpman is depicted with a red cap, blue shirt, and red overalls. Jumpman was given a mustache because a mouth could not be done with so few pixels. The cap also came from a practical limitation as the programmers could not animate hair. The player will lose a life should the player touch Donkey Kong, get hit by an obstacle, fall too far, or run out of time. Should the player complete the stage, the player will reach the next stage. The first stage has Jumpman climbing a construction site while avoiding barrels and oil drums tossed by Donkey Kong. The second stage has Jumpman climbing a structure full of conveyor belts that transport cement pans. The third stage has Jumpman ride elevators while avoiding bouncing springs. The fourth stage has Jumpman remove rivets from platforms, which causes Donkey Kong to fall down. Between each stage, Donkey Kong uses cutscenes to advance its plot. Before the first stage, Donkey Kong climbs to the top of a construction site. In the background, music can be heard. This music in particular is a variation on the American TV show Dragnet's theme. As the game continues, more cutscenes play to show the love between Jumpman and Lady. Nintendo released Nintendo R&D 1's Donkey Kong in Japan on July 9th, 1981. The American release would happen on July 31st, 1981. And that is the background of Donkey Kong. With that now told, it's time to play the game for ourselves. And here we are in the game. This is Donkey Kong. Now this is going to be a difficult game. Uh, it is kind of known at the time for being a difficult game, and I'm not particularly good at it. I have practiced quite a bit, I would say, uh, but there's also a chance that there's going to be a lot of luck uh, that goes against me 
in this game and I end up dying quite often. Uh, my goal is to show off all the different stages, to at least complete each of the four stages once. I'm not entirely sure that's going to be something that I can do, uh, but that is my goal. Uh, it might get to the point where I might have to use out some, some of my cheats in order to get that to happen, but I'm hoping to avoid that. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in a quarter, press the start button, and listen to the variation of Dragnet. That is a good little jingle there. And then Donkey Kong taunts me at the top, because of course he does. All right, let's head up, see what I can do with Jumpman. Uh, the barrels are going to come at you, and there's, there's some randomness to them, and that's what makes this game much more difficult, is the randomness. Uh, some of them will come down ladders. Like that one right there. That gives me the opportunity to climb up. Uh, and I can't at least tell when that's going to happen. And that makes things difficult for me. But we have made it to the top. Without dying, but of course, Donkey Kong won't let us get away with just that. And we have made it to rivets now. Uh, the way that the rivets work um, is you can walk over them while they're there. Then you have to jump over them on the way back. Um, so I have a habit of just kind of jumping over them all the time. Uh, you can fall, and if you fall, it will be to your doom. So I don't recommend doing that. Okay, now I'm just being chased. That's not nice at all. So we'll try to clear these out. Can't touch Donkey Kong at the top. Um, are you going to go down a ladder or are you going to come at me? You're going to go up a ladder. That is unexpected. I'm just going to head down here. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to deal with this right now. Um, time is starting to run out. Time is kind of my enemy on this stage. Just go. Now there's two of you. Okay, I can get this one, maybe. No, now he's blocking that. Let me up. How did I not get the parasol there? I'll take you out. Um, if I fall there, it will be to my doom. I'm starting to run out of time. I don't know if you can hear it kind of go in, but the time's starting to run out. Okay. We got through level one. And we reunited with Lady, and that, that's good. We're also very close to getting a high score, but because I had to take so long on that level, um, it didn't happen. Usually if you can beat level one, you'll at least beat the, uh, the default high score. Didn't happen today, though. Come on. <laughs> I was left with no choice there. I could have backed up, but I couldn't have jumped over all of those barrels. And that's why I think that this does rely on luck. But once again, I know that there are people that can get by um, pretty much anything that the game throws at them. And it just feels like they know something that I don't. And I've tried to do a bit of research into it, but I can't find anything that would help me there. All right. Made it to the top of level two, got the high score. Once again, we're like climbing the ladder and we've made it to my least favorite stage. This is the one like already I'm, I'm thinking I need to do save states. It is difficult and I've died. Jumpman cannot jump very far. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be bad. Okay. Jump up here. To there. Didn't time that right at all. I hate this stage. This is my least favorite stage. The springs are awful, too. 
We haven't even gotten to the springs yet, but the elevators are bad. Okay, so I guess we'll jump here. That's not too far. Okay. No, I got hit by that anyway. Okay, so I, I, that was a really good run for me. Um, from this point forward, I'm going to start using save states in order to try to show off uh, the rest of the game. But that that's one of my best runs clean the way that I just did it. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, show off how far I can go when I start cheating. We'll go ahead and drop a, a save after this little cutscene, and if I die, then I'll load it and try again. That's pretty much how we're going to go. Hopefully I don't need to do it in the middle of a level, but we will see. Alright, we'll drop a save. You can see I've tried a little bit earlier and struggled. We'll see what I can do this time. Um, I didn't use the hammer too much. I don't usually use it. Oh, come on! That was a heat-seeking barrel. <laughs> this is why I do what I can. That one was just not fair. It just came right at me. Okay. There. No, no, no. Like, the randomness of these just does not do well for me. All right, if I go here, are you gonna go down there? No. If I'm over here, you're gonna come down. Also, I should say that the, uh, the point, ugh, the points in this game don't always show up the way that they should. Uh, there are definitely times, like now I'm struggling with even the basic stuff, but um, sometimes you'll jump over a barrel and the game just doesn't care and get, doesn't give you points. That happens. Double barrel action. Yeah, there we go. What? <sighs> Suddenly uh, I'm relying on save states and I'm playing so much worse. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. But hopefully... Hopefully the game is fairly nice to me here. There we go. All right, on to rivets again. We will drop a save state here, and I should be good to get through this without dying. Hopefully it goes a lot faster than it did last time. Typically I like to go from the bottom up, but it doesn't always work out that way. There. <laughs> All right, we'll go this way, take you on. Now, one of the problems is that, that I ate that a little bit early, and now I can't defeat anything on the right side with a hammer. So now I just have that to go, and can I sneak my way up here somehow? No! Get away from me! No, well, I got points. Not sure for what, but they're all just hanging around that spot. There was nowhere for me to go. There was just nowhere for me to go there. All right, I should stick with the right side first, I think, then. Because you technically have two hammers that can be used on the left side, but only one hammer can be used on the right side. So the right side seems to be the better way to go. I'm going to take the top one first here. to me. All right. Lots of points there for not all that much. I don't like jumping over these guys. 
It's far too risky, in my opinion. They turn around on a dime. They're usually faster than you. But you know what? We got through that. And we're on to level two. Didn't beat my old high score, but that's okay. We're cheating. All right, so there, there. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to beat that. Not this time, but I can jump over it. You gonna come down the ladder? No. Went down every other ladder. All right, let's grab this. Give me some good points here. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand. Okay, well, we'll figure this out. Okay, there was a good clear zone there. Oh, that's... That's shenanigans. I was already in the air by the time that it decided to go down the ladder, so I was screwed. Really? It has never gone down that this whole time. But this time it decided to go down that, that ladder. I think it's I think it's depending on which way I'm looking. Okay, I didn't actually mean to grab the hammer, but it kind of happened. Okay, well, I made it. Yeah, I, there was there was no chance of that. Yeah, this is how I don't understand how people can get super high scores on this because of the randomness. And it, maybe you can influence which way the barrels go, but I can't look that far ahead. I'm just trying to survive the level that I'm on. There, there's no way. I don't understand. Like that's not possible. That's not possible for me to jump past. All right, didn't get the hammer that time. I'll save you a bit of time. Can you go down there? Thank you. All right, how much of you want to go down there? None? Super. I made it nonetheless. No! Ah, <laughs> oh, should have just jumped straight up instead of going to the left or right or whichever way I was facing. Shouldn't have gone forward. I'm gonna take you on and get a few points. Not that I care about points. But I have the hammer, so I might as well use it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was a steamroller down. Oh, come on! I should have gotten that. I should have gone over that. This just shows how how good my first run was. That's the issue here. Maybe you guys too high of an expectation of what I can do. Even with cheating though, I'm struggling with some of the finer aspects of the game, like not dying. I'm struggling with that part particularly. You know what? I will take that. Alright. There we go, that's my clearing. And there we go. New high score, thanks to the power of save states. All right, this is where bad things happen for me. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the springs. That was almost too far. I almost died there. Jumpman cannot cannot fall from a high distance at all. Yeah, that is death. That is death. We might have to save state in the middle of a level here. This is the worst one for me. I want to try to make it to the top, but I just don't trust my jump. No! I did it again! The same spot! Right, 
there. That was lucky. Now we're gonna make that jump up. Avoid all these platforms down here, but... So far, no good. Alright, so here's a safe spot. There we go! Okay! I am happy about that. Are we back to rivets? We're back to rivets. That means I have to go through the whole thing again, because rivets are always the last stage of a level. So, if I can get through this, then that means that I have to go through kind of everything again and hope for the best. No, that's not... That's not good. I thought I was going to be able to get that in time, but didn't quite make it. Keep in mind that, you know, these flames are just kind of coming on from off the screen. They could just show up whenever and destroy me. Okay, so this side is done. Start from the top and work our way down. Nope! There was no safe spot. It was a trick question! <laughs> okay, over here... Down here... Nope! Nope! They also change speeds on you, these guys. Like I said, there are pros at this game that are far better than I will ever be. Took the top one first, actually. Nope, we'll jump over here. Take you out. I have myself stuck in a corner here now. You're gonna wait till my hammer goes away, then climb up here, aren't you? <laughs> Okay, so that cuts them off there. And I should have a clear path to victory again. Alright, so that's level two down. Level three should show us all the different levels that all the different stages that are possible here. So we'll drop another save here. Where does this one go? In the same spot. Oh, it goes a little bit further to the right, actually. Alright, get some points. I mean, those will give me lives, but I don't, I don't care about those because I'm cheating. Okay, can I go now? Thank you. And in this one, the hammer isn't always you know, your best friend, as much as you think it is. Sometimes it prevents you from making progress. But, you know, I feel like I'm doing pretty... Uh, got caught on the got caught on the ladder, didn't make it all the way to the top. Otherwise, I would have been in the clear. Hit right, and I was still on the ladder. Okay, so far this one's looking good. What? How dare you, like, discus throw it. Damn it. No. That was a good run, and I risked it all. And failed. Okay, are you going to go down here? No, then I will climb up there. I could have been... Could have been screwed there if that went down the ladder. No! They didn't give me enough room. So many barrels. No points, but you know what? I don't care. No! Like, there's just certain spots. I have to have the technique of, like, any any barrel could go down any ladder. And I don't right now. 
You have to play this game super cautiously. No, no, well, yeah, it's, and sometimes he just throws a ladder, or throws a, a barrel at you, where there's no possible way you can know where it's gonna go. Okay. Once again, if that top one went down the ladder, I would've been screwed. I... Could, there was nothing I could do there. Once you're in the air, I'm just gonna hit the button and hope that he jumps in time. Yeah, yeah, of course it did. I just want to show off the last stage. There's conveyor belts that I still need to show off. Everything else has been done. That's my opening. Made it to the top. There we go. All right, we're through level three. And we made it to a whole new stage. This is the conveyor belt. As you can see, it's not the fastest here. All right, let's try this again. This is the last stage that I wanted to show off. So once we get through this, we are good. Yeah, the spring one is the one that I'm told is the hardest, is the one that I have the most difficulty with. So I believe you. <laughs> I believe people when they say that. Okay, just go away. No! I was screwed there. I don't know why I keep using save states, but you know what? You just never know in this game. Can I destroy the concrete? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's go this way. Nope, got hit by... Can't even touch the concrete. way still. Nope, nope, that was a bad decision. Not sure there's a good decision, but that was definitely a bad one. Okay, I'm gonna go to the right side. No! Wait, I have to go on the left side, don't I? Because the ladders are on the left. I'm just noticing this. We made it to the top and rescued her. All right, so let's let this run kind of die naturally. As we, well, we're gonna die here. This, this is. Okay, well that that was not what I expected, but we're we're good. We we showed off all the different stages of the game. Once again, difficult game. Requires luck. Um, doesn't always feel like I have the best control, to be honest. But definitely fun. Nope, all right. Thought I could squeeze in there. All right, how many lives do I have left? I'm gonna lose them all on this elevator level. There's, I just don't see getting through this. Um, I did watch actually a full documentary on this game. Um, one of the best players in the world basically said that even in this game, uh, this stage, he struggles uh, because you can't always make it. Wow. Died there again. I think it's because I keep on going to the edge of the platform and I don't need to. In fact, doing so will kill me. But on this one, um, he ended up like drawing on the screen where he needed the springs to be in order 
to actually um, accomplish what he needed to do, which is get past him at the end here. Because not every spring is in a spot where you can win. I thought that was a safe spot, but I was wrong. Is that it? Okay, that is it. So that is Donkey Kong. Uh, that worked out, you know, fairly well. I wish that I had been able to get through things faster, but, you know, ultimately this is a difficult game and it, it really does show. So that is the game with the game now played. It's time to talk about how it holds up today. Playing the game today, it does feel dated. The controls do feel stiff. Uh, the randomness kind of screwing you over gives it that old school video game feel, uh, but it is still fun. It is a difficult game, as I mentioned several times, and I feel that I've shown, uh, but that could also just me being bad at the game. Uh, but the game does feel like it was an early 80s game still. It feels that way because of the stiff character, because of the fact that... Um, the points don't always work. Sometimes you jump over the barrels, you get points. Sometimes you don't jump over the barrels, you don't get points. And sometimes it goes the other way, where sometimes you jump over a barrel and don't get anything. Sometimes you don't jump over the barrel and still get points. It happens sometimes like that. Um, the, the scoring is a little off, uh, but really the, the problem with this game is kind of the slow movement where you're slower than the enemies, where you're slower than the obstacles, and the character doesn't always jump quite the way you want. Um, playing the game today, especially with that character, the, the jump man that you're playing with, it doesn't always feel like uh, he controls the way that he should. The fact that you can do a backwards jump is a little odd, but that's the way that the game kind of works. Like I said, it is a difficult game. It takes a while to build up to show off all the different stages. Um, the, the elevator one with the springs, I feel, is the most unfair, uh, simply because you have to very carefully pick your spots of where you jump and when you jump. Otherwise, terrible things will happen. And for your character to be able to jump, but then to not be able to survive a fall of about a jump's length, maybe a jump and a half, um, doesn't feel right. Um, it feels like he dies very quickly to fall damage uh, when I don't feel like he should. You know, I can maybe jump two feet into the air. If I were to fall from a height of three feet, then, you know, I would be fine. Um, just for the record, the, like, if I remember right, the standing jump world record is about three feet. So, like, not too many people can get their, their feet too high up. So, for our character to be able to jump that high, but then not survive a, height, a fall from, you know, a little bit higher, does seem a little off. So, that is kind of my thoughts on the game. It's fun, don't get me wrong. And it's something that I'm sure a lot of people want to go back and play often, but uh, the replayability for me is not high. I am happy that I made it through. Uh, I, I do want to get better at the game, but mostly because of the prestige factor, not necessarily because of the game itself. The game doesn't necessarily make me want to go back and revisit it over and over again, but it was definitely something different at the time. So playing it in 1981 once again very different from playing it in 2021 the game is fun the graphics i feel are very good especially for the time like there is no doubt what i am looking at i am looking at a, a carpenter of some sort some sort of a blue collar worker as we would refer to him and every man as uh japan loves to refer to their characters uh, i'm definitely looking at a giant ape a giant gorilla i'm definitely looking at a damsel in distress uh, i'm looking at parasols and hammers those are very distinct and very clear in a way that a lot of other games can't manage at the time so that is definitely a positive the sound is also good um, I don't necessarily think that all the sounds work very well, but overall, the sense that you get from the sound is definitely one of tension and scoring and being able to destroy things and stuff like that. It has 
a, a good amount of sound, and I think the sound works well in this game. Uh, the gameplay, like I said, it does feel stiff, but then again, that's kind of standard at the time. Um, it is good gameplay for the time, but doesn't necessarily hold up. That's probably the part that holds up the worst for me is the gameplay. That it was good, but it is dated, and that's what feels off about playing the game today. And like I said, replayability, um, not high for me, um, but overall, I feel that people will want to revisit this game at least in short bursts, not necessarily in huge amounts of time. So that's basically where I am on the game. It's definitely a game that holds up better than most, but there are still issues with it playing it today. And that's my modern take on the game. Donkey Kong proved to be very successful for Nintendo. The original 2000 units sold quickly and more orders were placed quickly. By October, Nintendo was selling 4,000 units of Donkey Kong a month. In its first year, Nintendo sold 60,000 units and earned $180 million, $490 million in 2021. In total, Donkey Kong sold 65,000 units in Japan and 67,000 units in the United States. Nintendo had finally broken through and become popular in the North American market. The critics liked the game at the time as well, although the difficulty was seen as high. As time has gone on, the views on the game have remained positive. The game remains popular today as well. Even the competition for Donkey Kong's world record high score has become popular, becoming the subject of a 2007 documentary. The record has been one of controversy over the years and has been held by many people. As of recording this, though, the current world record is held by John McCurdy, who reached a score of 1,272,700 on January 11th, 2021. The legacy of Donkey Kong would become one of the largest and most prolific of any video game. Work instantly began on licensing the game and its characters to other companies for more versions and more games. We will keep a close eye on this legacy as we continue. Looking ahead, with the success of Donkey Kong, Nintendo would become a major player in the video game industry. We will, of course, keep talking about Nintendo as we continue, which also means we will hear from Hiroshi Yamauchi and Minoru Arakawa again. The main two creators of the game, Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpei Yokoi, would continue to be instrumental in the history of Nintendo and video games, so we will continue to talk about both of these men in detail as we continue. We will also hear from Yukio Kaneoka again, as he would continue to work at Nintendo as a sound composer. The American distributors, Ron Judy and Al Stone, would become millionaires because of Donkey Kong, as they worked on commission. They would continue to work in the industry, and we will actually hear from them again. We will even hear from the lawyer that filed the trademark, Howard Lincoln, again. Donkey Kong's success would help a lot of video game careers. That will do it for the story of Donkey Kong for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video when we'll take command.